Hello dear student, this is Dr. Seher from Dinta Best, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD, ADAT and EFK exam. So today, I have uh, taken a topic of pediatrics that is theories of tooth eruption. So in this video, we are going to discuss what are the different types of eruption, active eruption, passive eruption, what's the difference, what are different stages of eruption like pre-eruptive phase, eruptive, post-eruptive phase and the most important, what different theories of the tooth eruption and what is the most accepted theory we have. Let us first start with the definition of eruption. Eruption is defined as the axial movement of the tooth from its developmental position in the alveolar socket into the functional position within the oral cavity. We have the active eruption, we have the passive eruption. So active eruption is actually the vertical movement of the tooth due to the actual movement of the teeth. While the passive eruption is with aging, you have recession and you have more tooth exposure in the oral cavity. That is your passive eruption. Now we see that three different stages uh, of eruption we have. First is the pre-eruptive phase. So this phase will actually start before there is an actual axial movement of the teeth. Tooth birds we know they are initially crowded inside the crypts and then when the growth of the jaw happens, both the primary and the permanent tooth bird they move away from each other and they align themselves in their respective crypts. The so permanent tooth bird they develop adjacent to the primary tooth bird and later on they will move. Apically. Now, the eruptive phase is this when the actual axial movement of the tooth is happening, and the post eruptive phase is a phase that is for compensating the occlusal wear and tear. You have occlusal passive occlusal eruption of the tooth throughout the life, or there is proximal wear and tear. You have the then you have the post eruptive phase. Post eruptive phase is actually there to compensate for the occlusal and the proximal wear and tear. Now, if you look at the primary tooth eruption, we are going to discuss uh, detail about the oral epithelium and the role of. So, we know that uh, reduced enamel epithelium plays a very important role here, and reduced enamel epithelium is made up of outer inner enamel epithelium, which fuses with the oral epithelium to actually form the junctional epithelium or the epithelial attachment. So, it will firstly form an epithelium line tunnel. Now, what is governocular cord and the canal? Governocular canal or the cord is actually the eruption process which is the same for the primary. Let us understand what is governocular cord and canal. Initially, both the permanent and the primary teeth, they lie in the same crypt. But as the deciduous teeth are erupting, the permanent tooth become more enclosed, completely enclosed by the bone, except for a small canal which is filled with connective tissue. And that is called as a gubernocular cord. And the bony canal in which it is present is called as the gubernocular canal. So you can see the picture here. These are the holes that will lead to gubernocular canal. The main function of the gubernocular canal is to help guiding the permanent tooth to erupt. Let us see what are different mechanisms, what are different theories that are given for eruption. So the first one we have is the bone remodeling theory. Then we have the root growth theory that is also called as cushion hammock ligament theory. Then the vascular pressure theory and the most accepted theory we have is the PDL or periodontal ligament traction theory, most accepted. Let us see the first theory that we have is the bone remodeling theory. This theory states that the tooth erupts because there is bone resorption above the tooth and bone deposition below the tooth and that will push the tooth to its functional position. But this theory is not accepted. Why? Because bone remodeling actually occurs as an effect of tooth eruption, not as a cause of it. Now, the next theory, which is a root growth theory, it says that as the root grows, it exerts downward force or pressure on the bone, which will push the tooth up like a rocket. But this theory, again, it is not accepted because the tooth usually moves for a greater distance as compared to the length of the root. And eruption will still continue even if you section the root, not accepted theory. Now the vascular pressure theory, the third theory, this theory states that the pressure exerted by the blood vessels at the apex of the tooth, it helps in eruption of the tooth. But this theory again it is not accepted because the pressure that is exerted is not enough for the eruption of the tooth and teeth is erupting even when the vascular supply is cut. The last theory which we are left with is PDL or periodontal ligament traction theory. That's the most accepted theory. This theory states that PDL fibroblasts, they have a contactile property. And the fibroblasts are interconnected to each other through nexus. 
The contractile forces are transmitted to the fibers that will reorient them to help in the eruption of the teeth. Experimentally, actually it is proven that the dental follicle is the most important structure that is responsible for the eruption of the teeth. Now for the shedding or the exfoliation of the teeth that will eliminate the deciduous dentition and helps to give way for the permanent dentition to erupt. So it is initiated either by the pressure that is exerted by permanent successor teeth or by increased occlusal forces and the cells which are responsible for resorption of the roots of primary and help in their shedding or exfoliation, these cells are the odontoclast cells.